Third-party apps are now available inside the Webflow Designer. I think this is a huge moment for the Webflow community. I personally have been advocating for this, asking this and waiting for this day for years, which is why I'm super excited to share this with you today. I wanna to show you what's available for us right now inside of Webflow, but also talk about the implication of this for the future of the whole Webflow community. So let's get started. Right here in Webflow, you will see that you have a new panel here that is called Apps. Now we did have apps previously, but they were kind of like apps in the background about how CMS works or integrates with other services. But we never had apps that operates kind of like plugins with windows that affect what's going on in the designer. So out of the box, we have a few apps here that I'll go through and also access to the app marketplace where we'll have more and more apps coming into the future in the future. Now, probably the coolest thing that a lot of people have been waiting for is tables, native tables within Webflow. And this one is coming from FinSuite. So you can see, you can launch this thing and it opens up basically a window and you basically have a panel here for creating tables, kind of like what you would have in Google Doc or something like this. Now, previously, if you need to present data in a table form on your website for whatever reason, maybe it's a feature set, maybe it's a comparison table or something like this, you could hack it with grid, but that would be very complex, not very intuitive and not I guess the semantic way of building tables. So right here, it's very easy to kind of like draw the table that you need and then basically go, let's say I wanna add this into this container. I'm basically going to insert table component. I'm gonna click here. Whoops, I clicked multiple times. So now I have a bunch of tables here. So let me delete these. But now I have this table components with the table head, body and caption. We can go ahead, we can double click and you know uh, input all of the text here. And this is actually, HTML table. So this is actually the thing itself. We can go ahead, we can style this and we have tables right inside of Webflow. Uh, let me go ahead and delete this and see what else we've got here. So we've got Unsplash, which is a super popular way for people to bring in images for their web design. So if you're not working in like designing in Figma first and then moving to Webflow, if you're designing right inside of Webflow, this is a great way to search within, you know, Unsplash, let's say I'm looking for whatever, abstract, get some images and then click and it's already inside of my Webflow page. This is very well, I guess, requested uh, in a way to bring in images very, very fast. One thing to note though, is that right now, this image is basically kind of like an unsplash image component, which I can click here and you can see all of the parameters. It's actually pulling from the unsplash. So it's not bringing it and hosting it on Webflow. It's actually pulling it from Unsplash directly. I think in the future, they're gonna bring it over to host it over uh, Webflow if you want to compress them or if you wanna do stuff to them. But right now they're brought over from Unsplash. The next thing that we have is the Member Stack app. And Member Stack is basically a third party membership uh, platform that allows you to create a membership website within Webflow. It's actually, Webflow are actually using Member Stack uh, for the registration of Webflow Conference over the Webflow's native uh, users and membership side because I guess it's more advanced. So if you wanna work with that, Previously, what you had to do is basically give an ID to specific elements uh, to turn them into specific content types or use data from the membership. So this is basically, if you're familiar how to work with member stack, this is going to make your uh, membership website building much, much easier. What else do we have here? So we have Jasper AI, which is basically a writing tool. Now this one, to be able to use this one, you actually need to have a paid Jasper account. But basically what you can do with this is if you have a bunch of text here, you can select it and then you can rewrite this, improve the writing, change tone, all kinds of things that you can do with AI uh, text editing. So this is a Jasper. And I think, let me look here if we've got HubSpot is basically kind of like a CRM. I'm not personally using it, but I guess this is a cool integration. And I'm very, very excited about the new apps that are coming to Webflow because for the first time, the whole Webflow community, which has done phenomenal work on creating template, creating libraries for UI kits, they can actually create apps and tools for us to create components and create more advanced stuff inside of Webflow. So the development of new features within Webflow are going to be rapidly increased. We don't only have to wait for Webflow now to develop what we, the community want, we can actually build um, 
yeah, we can build apps on top of Webflow. This is going to actually create a business, new businesses uh, opportunities for people who want to build on top of Webflow. Um, I'm very excited about this because I think, yeah, it's going to bring so much creativity from the community into Webflow and it's going to give us amazing, amazing tools. Let me know in the comments what you think about the apps and what apps would you like to see? Perhaps we or one of our partners can create them for you. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.